What's up, y'all? What's up? We live. We live up in here. What's up, YouTube? Thank you for joining me. Andy Kruger here, dog trainer extraordinaire, here to answer all your questions and solve the world's dog training problems by the end of this. Everything will be solved. Kidding. Okay, look, if you're new here, this is the way we kick things off. I'm going to touch on a subject I feel is pretty important uh, that people want to know about. I'll let the questions come in and we'll knock this thing out. If you saw the thumbnail, the beginning of this Q&A, where to start with your puppy? Whether it's a Belgian Malinois, a German Shepherd, or any other kind of breed, you get this thing, you bring it home, where do we start? You go online, you hear 50 million different things you should do. I'm going to break it down really simply. I'm going to tell you what I would do if I brought my puppy home. Where to start with your puppy? The first two to four weeks, okay? Let's keep this basic. Two things. Two types of sessions you're going to do with this puppy. Of course, the first session, the first thing you want to do is engagement. You want to engage the puppy. Play is the best way to do this. You want to be able to pop that puppy out in your house, in your backyard, and you want to be able to play with it a little bit. Not pet it and love on it for a half hour. Not have it curl up and lay by your feet. You want to be able to play with this thing a little bit. So if you have a little toy, that's great. Even if you don't, whoo, whoo, whoo. you want the puppy going, wow. This guy or this gal is interesting. I like this. I feel playful when I see them. Oh, what's he doing now? Whoa, where's she going? Whoa, this is fun. That's kind of what you want your puppy doing. That's engagement. You can use food for this as well, of course. It's a little bit of a cheat code because puppy wants to eat. It's a little bit easier, but you can use your food. Whoa, I'm here. Whoa, look, I ran over there. Bah, bah, bah. Whoa, you're so interesting. I love you. That's the first kind of session you want to do with the puppy. Throw all the obedience out the window. I don't want to be doing any sit. I don't want to be doing down. I want sit, sit, wait. Get out of here with that. It's eight weeks old. Get out. Just fun. Just the puppy going, oh, yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah, this lady. Oh, this is going to be fun. Second type of session you should do with your dog. Now, that's all building engagement. Second session, building independence. Make an independent puppy for the love of God. Make the puppy independent. What do I mean by that? You have a session where you don't engage the puppy. You want to see how puppy interacts with the environment. This doesn't mean let it run around your house for a half hour. Okay? You want to take your puppy to an environment, let's say the park. Let's say uh, something that just comes to mind with me is, we have a, a camper that sits on our property. I want to take puppy in there. I want to take him to the park. I want to take puppy uh, down in my basement. And I just want to hold the leash on a harness and see how the puppy interacts with the environment. For example, they come up on a slick floor and they freeze and they hit the deck and they won't move. Well, I don't love that. I'm learning about the puppy. 
just the opposite slick foot. They fly by it, no problem. Boom, they're jumping up on this. Oh, they're over here. Whoa, they're investigating this. That's what's going to make a nice, independent, confident puppy if you're not up the puppy's butt all the time when they're out of their crate. So you're going to bond and learn a lot through engagement, but you're also going to learn a lot about your puppy through just doing a session of letting them explore the environment. Big mistake people make with the puppy is they merge those two sessions, those two ideas, too soon. We're going to go for a walk around the block. Okay, come here now. Let's sit. Let's look at me. Guys, the first couple weeks, you either want to be engaging the puppy or the puppy's independent. You don't want to do both. There's always exceptions to the rule. Someone could say, well, I did that. I get it. But you want to be testing that puppy environmentally. You want to let them be doing their thing totally away from you so you can see, you know, really what you're working with or you want to be building your engagement. That's where I like to start with puppies. Those are the two things I'm doing. And you better believe I'm not like, down, good, stay, get out. We got the dog's whole life for that kind of stuff. Engagement, making the puppy just so interested in me and what I'm doing, it's, it's crazy. And then on the flip side of that, I take the puppy somewhere, I just ignore them, and I go, okay, that made him a little bit nervous. I got to make a note. Well, that made him really excited. I'm going to make a note of that. Oh, okay, that was, mm, I'd like to change that. Ooh, that was good. Okay, cool. Got it. Good information, good session. Let's get in the car. Let's go. That's kind of where I like to start. So let me know what you guys think. Now what we're going to do, we got some questions coming in. My Patreon crew always gets first dibs. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. That's where I post all the cool kid content. You got to pay to play. You know what I'm saying? That's where all the cool kids go. But I'm going to read off a few of my patrons questions first. And then we're going to get into the YouTube live. But you guys are going to love this. Question number one. Simple. This one's from Hassan. What's up? Hey, Andy, two questions. What signs should I look out for that show my cane corso is tired? How many times a day should I feed him? He's 14 months old. I feed him raw twice a day, thanks. Second question first, twice a day is great. Raw, amazing, and awesome. So, you're killing that one. Um, what should you look for that the cane corso is tired? I'll address being tired and then I'll address like overheating because it's kind of, you're going to see that your, your 14 month old corso is tired. Um, physically they're slowing down. The sits aren't as snappy. The downs aren't as snappy. The heel, maybe they're trying, but they're lagging behind you a little bit. When they pant and the end of their tongue really comes to a curl and really curls up, you know big boy's wearing down at that point. You should just kind of be able to feel like, okay, he, he's losing some steam. So some of those things you can look for um, physically how the dog's perform, the speed, the power, if you're doing tug or anything like that, they're not biting quite as hard. They get a little bit chewy, a little shifty on the grip. Maybe you pull it out of their mouth unexpectedly and that didn't happen in the first five minutes of the session. But for overheating, this is where you got to be real careful, especially with a Corso. If you're really working them in the heat, you want to keep an eye on the inside of the dog's ears because they're going to go from like a nice white pink when the dog's getting hot the inside of those ears are really red. They, they getting red. The dog's breathing pattern. You know, a nice normal pant is good. 
But when they're really, really on overdrive, <laughs> there's a little bit more to the pant. Cool your dog off. Always water on the belly, on the paws, never over top on the back. And one more little pro tip for you. If your dog is freaking exhausted and like really heating up and they need a rep, you put them in a down stay, they're going to kick over on one hip and then lay down and then they're going to shift. You guys know what I'm talking about or you think I'm out of my mind right now? You got to see it. But the dog's laying down, they're on one hip. They're pen and they're constantly shifting what hip they're laying on. Have you guys ever seen that when a dog is crazy, like worked over? That's what you're gonna see. Like I was just recently at a French ring trial. The the ring three, one of the ring threes came off the field after the routine. They were laying there. <laughs> and of course dog was fine, but that shifting on the hip really tells you something. So watch out for that, Hassan. Thank you for your question. This one's from Javier. Hello, Andy. New owner and patron. Awesome content. Thank you in advance. Thank you. New three-month-old Belgian Malinois. Okay. Shy from the beginning. She's used to see... She sees dogs and bolts. With some tug play and exposure to noise and dogs and everything else, she seems to be getting confidence back. The other day, her retractable leash fell and sent her in a panic, screaming and running for her life. So he dropped the end of the retractable leash and the dog thought something was on its butt and was freaking out. After catching up to her and calming her down, she was kind of okay with the thing. She still seemed nervous about the leash and won't run, just stays knowing running doesn't help. Any tips? She shows signs of wanting to protect as well and picking up thing rather quickly. I... D no, Javier, I, she's not protective. Is there any hope for her? Second, she does great with food, but if she doesn't smell the food, she just stares till I get her the smell of the food. Dude, if there's food, like, within a mile, the dog should be able to smell it. You know what I mean? She shows stubbornness and barks for what she needs. Now, Javier, now I love you, and thank you for your question, but I got to be honest with you. There's absolutely, positively... No such thing as a stubborn puppy. So we get, we got to change the wording there. I know there's a strong character underneath some of the fear. Play drive and food driver high makes me believe she can be great. Look, Javier, let's be honest here. Could you keep the dog and make the dog 20 million times better than she is now? 100%. Are there a million things you could do to boost the confidence a hundred percent? Javier, you just have to decide what you want. If a three month old Malinois puppy is really displaying a lot of fear and doesn't really rebound that quickly, you just have to determine now if this is the ride that you want to take. I'm not encouraging you to get rid of the dog, but I'm just letting you know for six months, a lot of your focus is going to be on creating that, that confidence and that resilience. Whereas if you had a two or three month old that was already pretty confident, resilient, your first six months would be kind of off to the races, doing your engagement, your, your play, your obedience. Um, so it just depends what you want. Like any tips, I mean, like here's the thing, like I don't love that at all. If I personally got a dog that was doing what you described, I'd go, excuse me, breeder. 
Yeah. It's a not ideal. I don't love it. But can you turn the dog around and make them pretty good? Yes. Here's the question. If you had a crazy confident eight-week-old puppy, stupid confident, you had an eight-week-old now and while puppy, three months, whatever, that was really, really nervous and really fearful. Could the very nervous, fearful ever achieve what the confident achieves? That is the question. Dog sports? No. Just pet life, obedience stuff? Possible. But it will be a bit of a long road on that fearful dog. So you just really have to decide, does the dog have enough characteristics that I really like? You know, versus the ones that I don't. But hey, trust me, anyone out there, if you get a puppy and a month or two goes by and, you know, you're really well educated on puppy ownership, you follow real trainers and you see what you do and how, and it's just not really jiving with you and it, it's not, I really don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you know what, it's not the perfect fit. You know, we, we want to try again. Definitely don't drop the retractable again, though. Definitely don't do that. Look, all you can do is, you, you know, you, you're on the Patreon. Just What you see in the videos, you do that with your dog. You follow the YouTube channel. You do the best that you can and circle back with me in a couple weeks and let me know how it's going. This one's from Billy. What up, Billy? This is a great question. What are some goals for a beginner like myself? I need something to work towards or we just go out and do the same stuff every day. Sound familiar, guys? I saw someone talking about the canine good citizen, but I wouldn't even know where to start. Thanks in advance. You're the man. Wish I found you when he was eight weeks instead of two years old. Would have been a game changer. Now we got to make a game change at two. We go out once at 4 a.m. for about an hour before work. That's dedication. Then again, after work, half hour session of play. All right, Billy. So I mentioned this in a previous bit. Here's what you got to do, Billy. And anyone else watching, even if you have absolutely no plans, no desire or interest to compete in a dog sport, you learn the basic information about the major dog sports, basic stuff, French ring, Mondial ring, IGP. You go to those websites, you pull up the rule book. You see, there's let in all dog sports, there's an entry level, and then there's levels one, two, and three. One's pretty easy, three's pretty hard. Okay, two's in the middle. Duh. Check out some dog sports, Billy. Let's take French ring, because you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Check your boy's resume, okay? We ain't playing. Take French ring. Let's just take a French ring level one. What does my dog need to do to do that? Even if you don't want to compete, you're going to get some cool ideas of stuff to train because dog sports, they've thought of it all. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So you go, what's French ring? What level one? What can I do? Your dog has to show they can heal on leash. Got it, Andy. Your dog has to do an absence of handler. Mm, that's interesting. I could work towards that. Your dog has to do a food refusal. Ooh, okay. Yeah, no, he wouldn't do that right now. Yeah, your dog has to do off-leash muzzle healing. My dog definitely couldn't do that. That'd be something cool to train. Your dog has to do a thrown retrieve. Your dog has to be able to pick up an item, hold it, bring it back to you, and politely present it. That could be useful for me and my dog to do. Your dog has to do change of positions. So if you're bored of heel, sit, down, stay on your leash, 
change of positions. Your dog's at a distance, sit, down, stand, down, sit, stand. Okay, boop, whistle recall. These are some of the things, you go to ring three, a send away, an unseen retreat. Maybe we start training a hurdle. So the dog sports definitely can lend some good inspiration to help break up the monotony of your heel sit down stay. It's a little bit more fun. It's a little more interactive. It's not all about control. It's about motivation in the dog. So I'd recommend checking that out. The canine good citizens all, all fun and well. Um, but I mean, it's, it's pretty easy and you could definitely check that out. But I like going to dog sports and going like, well, look, Mondi will ring. Look, look, my dog can do change of position. Now, how about like with a bunch of streamers? How about with, you know, like kicking a ball? You know, so there's always little things you can get from that. So I hope that helped, Billy. Okay, we're going to YouTube now. Thanks, y'all, for those questions. We're going to go to YouTube. Damn, will they hold my flight? Christy, they will hold your flight. Just tell them Andy Kruger said so, and you can watch this live before you get on your flight. No problem. We live. Hey, what's up, y'all? What up? First live. Oh, yeah. Should I get a Malin one? Nope. Patreon crew, what's up, Ashley? Ironically, I'm going to look at a four-month-old female this afternoon. Let's get some nuggets. That's awesome. Look, when you're looking at a female Malinois four months old, you need to worry about one thing and one thing only, confidence. Is it a confident little puppy? Is the puppy ready to take on the world? Is the puppy ready to go anywhere with anyone and do anything? That's what I'm looking for in a puppy. If they're curled up in the corner and won't come out, that might be a problem. My Emma is allergic to chicken. Are there any training treats that aren't chicken based? You know, Jason, here's the thing. I don't I don't know. I mean, yeah, of course there are. Um, I don't know any off the top of my head. I don't deal with that. But of course, there's going to be some treats that aren't chicken. But Jason, the whole allergy thing, I would go ahead and get a second, third, fourth opinion on that because I have a lot of clients who come in, they go, they're allergic to this, they're allergic to that, they're allergic to this. Guys, it's not, I don't want to speak out of turn here. Come on, who are we kidding? Like I care if I speak out of turn. I've seen a lot of vets that'll... You know, the dog is on a very low-grade kibble that's not good in any fashion, and they're having reactions, and they go, oh, well, there's chicken in that. Allergic to chicken. Jason, I ain't saying your dog's not allergic, okay? Don't, don't get it twisted, but whenever I hear, oh, they're allergic to chicken, uh, look into that a little bit more because um, are they allergic to chicken or are they having a reaction to a lot of the preservatives and chemicals that come in the low-grade kibble? You know what I mean? Uh-oh! <clears throat> Jordan, one of my past Patreon members, Mal pup coming on the 16th, excited to start over. Jordan, you better not mess that thing up. Better not mess it up, Jordan. You better call your boy. Macedonian gangster. Hey, Andy, why sometimes my dog doesn't like to go train and play with me? 80% of the time he's excited and in a good mood, but he sometimes isn't. Well, I don't like that at all. Your dog should be excited 100% of the time. 
here's what you do. That 20% of the time your dog doesn't really seem into it, let him get loose. Let him jump. Grab a toy out. Don't be like, heel, sit. Come on, stay. No. Get that thing loose. Start the session by throwing something, getting it, wrestling with them a little bit. That's what you need to do. You need to up your excitement level. You got to start training maybe with a little sparring match rather than obedience. Oh boy. Here's Ruben. When you would go on a holiday, what would go into training a stranger to take care of your dogs? Especially if it's a German shepherd that doesn't like strangers. Now, Ruben, I, I don't know if this answer is going to help you at all. Uh, but I'll tell you my honest answer. It would be a, a cold day in you know where. It's a kid's show. Algorithm. It would be a cold day in hell. Did I leave my dog with a stranger? Never in one million years... Would I leave my beloved, highly trained, poured in tens of thousands of dollars into the dot to someone that isn't way overqualified? I would never leave my dog with someone that would take like a bunch of training to watch it. There's a handful of people, maybe less, currently alive I would leave my dog with and even then I'm calling them every day Andy you're crazy maybe I am don't do it Ruben you need to find someone that's so qualified to house and take care of dogs like it, it's not even funny Pro move. One-year-old male travels on the bite. The decoy says he's very chewy despite being back tied and having the soup presented to him clearly. How would you problem solve this? I mean, I really have to see it. The, the decoy says he's chewy. <laughs> I gathered from him typewritering your arm, decoy. Thank you. Look, if you're working with a decoy, if your dog's chewing, that's the decoy's problem. You know what I mean? That's why you're paying the decoy to, like, to train that, to fix that. That's the decoy's problem. You know what I mean? Imagine if you brought me, my, brought me your dog and I was just like, oh yeah, they're, they're terrified to be on the bite. Look, doesn't want to be here. He'd be like, fix it, Andy. Fix it. So that's the decoy's problem. Decoy's, decoy's got to fix that with back pressure, with proper equipment, with proper duration on the bite. The dog chews because the dog can. We have to eliminate the possibility of the chew and get the dog to realize, ooh, Biting and holding is pretty nice. I like this. So if you're working with a decoy, that's their problem. Look, it's just a back tie, proper equipment, and proper duration on the bite. If the dog bites and then starts chew, with back pressure, the dog cannot chew. The dog will fall off the bite if they go to chew. They will come off the bite with the right back pressure, with the right equipment, and the right duration. So take that into consideration. <laughs> okay, here's Ashley, loyal Patreon member. What's up, Ashley? She's coming to train soon. Going to whip that German Shepherd of hers into shape. Ashley says, Andy, I know you hate this question, but I'm not accepting no comment as an answer. <laughs> Come on, Ash. Come on. Let's go. Uh, what do you think of other dog trainers on YouTube? 
Ashley, I'll tell you what I think about other dog trainers on YouTube. Uh, and I'm going to be very, very nice and polite. I don't like them. I don't like them one bit. None of them. Don't like them. Now, before everyone gets mad for me being negative, the other day, a great client of mine sent me a link to a video that wasn't mine. Bad trainer, how dare you? Client sent a link to me of a trainer on YouTube. Trainer. Trainer on YouTube goes, Andy, is this any good? So first I went, why in the world are you watching any videos that aren't mine? That's a horrible idea. And I really didn't even want to click the video and open it because it's like painful, excruciating for me to watch some of this stuff. So I click on it and I opened it and I watched a good bit of it. I was shocked and floored how bad this was and this is I won't mention any names because nowadays people I'm gonna sue you that's slander not gonna mention names very popular trainer on YouTube hundreds of thousands of people follow it and makes guaranteed hundreds of thousand dollars a year if not a million so seriously I'm not just trying to knock anyone out think is good this is someone that's out there being like I'm I'm the man I'm the fu I watched this video and I went are you joking me anytime you see titles like uh, the secret to stop leash pulling or they had this overweight lab in a public park with a prong collar and the trainer was like oh yeah see this dog has no engagement with the owner um so we're gonna fix all that he gets the dog on the leash and he's like so just start walking and then he turns and just jacks the dog on the prong collar and then he's like so see, just after that, the problem's almost basically solved. How dare you? How dare you advertise yourself as this big experienced dog trainer? You go, this dog has no engagement. Let's put a prong on him in a public place and then just correct him. And then he'll become this really engaged trained dog. And then has the audacity to just jack this dog out of nowhere on the prong. This is why prongs are getting banned. Jack him on the prong and then go, problem's basically solved. I said to my client, I go, if you ever watch a video like this ever again, I'm going to show up at your house. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we got to settle down a little bit. But no, Ashley, there isn't anyone that I would refer and that I think would be good. Now, there are some legitimate dog trainers that post things on YouTube, but they're not like a YouTube dog trainer. They're not like actually going out there every, okay, what are we going to teach people today? You know, it's more... I couldn't believe it. Guys, even though I've, I've been on YouTube for a couple years, I don't watch dog training stuff at all unless it's someone that I like and none of them are on YouTube. But, oh my God, after go... And this person I'm talking about, it's not one of those complete goofballs and it's like, Andy, don't even give your time to that. This is like actually someone that people like legitimately follow and think is good. How dare you? You should be ashamed, sir. Okay? I won't mention who it is. I don't want you guys to think like, oh, you're so negative. You're so negative. Guys, no. Th this isn't negative. This is, this is cold, hard reality. If someone was out there and they painted a picture 
And they go, Andy, do you like this painting? And I go, you suck at painting. That would be negative. That would be just being a hater. Like, it's a matter of opinion. This is just matter-of-factly wrong. This is like if I was a strength and conditioning trainer and I saw a trainer online teaching someone to lift all wrong, like straining their back, like horrible, and then being like, good job. Oh my God, as a trainer, I'd get on there and I'd be like, well, that form is incorrect and that's really bad for your back. You shouldn't lift like that. That's not being a hater. That's just saying what's matter-of-factly wrong. So I don't want people to think I'm just whatever. But be careful out there, guys. Be careful the stuff that you watch and you take advice from, especially YouTube dog training. People in real life, but YouTube dog. Be careful because this isn't a home construction project. If you botch your drywall, you can pull it down and do it again, and then it's perfect and there's no problem. If you botch your dog training, you can't just, well, I mean, I guess you could go get a new dog and try it again, but you can't just fix it the way you can with like inanimate objects. Once it's done, it's done. One bad experience for the dog you could be in the hole for a while there. So be careful, guys. Wanted to pull my hair out when I saw that video. Thanks for asking, Ashley. Hey, Andy, loving the Patreon. I paid him to say that. Working on engaging and playing with my one-year-old female German Shepherd. As I'm playing with her, she is playful biting me how do i stop this maybe i'm playing incorrectly well if she's play biting you have a toy put it in her mouth put something in the dog's mouth give the dog something to bite so they don't try to find something to bite so you either got to be real quick if it's a real bitey dog just have a toy on you and just play with the toy easy solution my Roddy loves ball and tug when he is engaged with me in my yard in a quiet environment, but he drops the ball when he's losing engagement. Is that a lack of prey drive or lack of engaging with me? I don't know. Look, I'm sure your dog has tons of prey drive. I mean, why I'm sure of that, I have no idea. Look, it's a dog. They, they got prey drive. Uh, lack of engaging with me. Look, it's just if, if the dog will play with you with the ball, but then just kind of spits the ball out and just kind of da 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 You know, um, depends how long into the play that happens. If it happens like right away, it's a little different than if it's 20 minutes later and the dog's exhausted. What I would do with that is I would always have the ball on the rope, get it from my friends, Canine Culture Collective, Instagram, good luck remembering that and finding it, but mention I sent you. You got to have a ball on a rope. So you can control, and if we spit the ball, bing, boom, boom, bah, bah, whoa, hey, yeah, oh, it's easy. So easy answer, don't put your dog in a situation where it can do that. So you go, okay, win the ball, there you go. And, oh, he dropped the ball. No, keep it engaged, keep it fun, always have the toy on some sort of a handle so you can always create action. Be more exciting, make it more interesting. You got to meet the dog halfway. Don't expect the dog to do all the work. I live next to a 35 acre dog park with long trails and large ponds. Do you recommend taking my male on a walk off leash at my dog park? Other parks near me has very strict leash regulations. It's from Pax Yang. Look, Pax, you can do whatever you want with the dog. I, 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 I don't even like to say dog park 
let alone go to one. So that's a big no for me, but you can do whatever you want. Little tangent off this question though. And you guys got to follow me here because it'll sound weird at first. I hate off leash. I hate off leash. I hate it. Off leash. Stop it. No off leash. Look, I'm half kidding, but I'm serious. I found that the average dog owner. They're very, and I'm not talking about you, Pax, just anyone. They're just obsessed with off-leash, 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 off-leash. What, what do you want out of training camp? Oh, off-leash, 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 off-leash. Guys, we got to relax with the off-leash. And I get it. And having the dog off-leash is fun. And lots of freedom. And you really feel like, okay, this is legit. My, my boy's off leash. Okay. I hate off leash. Because if your dog is truly trained on leash and truly very good on leash, there's no difference. There's no it's the same thing. Like, if it's trained properly, yes, there's a leash attached. My leash is dragging. The leash is off. It's all the same. It's not some bit. Someone's like, dude, my dog's trained off leash. I'm going to be like, okay. I want to see what it can do on leash. Relax. But I get it. They can run and freedom and it's fun. You need to become best friends with a long line. And you want to maintain that friendship for a while. You know what I mean? If you have a 35 foot, 40 foot long line, your dog can get tons of exercise on that. If you know how to play with your dog, your dog will get crazy exercise on that. They don't need, why does the dog need to be 100 yards away from me? Why is that necessary? So, I know I didn't answer the question in any way whatsoever, but go ahead. You can take the dog there. I never would, but if it makes you happy and you believe that the dog is happy doing that, can't be all bad. I have a 12-week-old working line German Shepherd puppy. She keeps wanting to bite the string on the ball. I'm trying to prevent it. Got bit a few times. Any tips? Well, Zara, you're in luck. Because I have a free YouTube video on that very subject. Getting the dog to bite the ball and not the rope. If you don't have a ball and rope from Canine Culture Collective, only found on Instagram, you're at a deficit because those are the best. No, it's not my company. They're just friends of mine. But I have a video covering that, so check it out. I'm covering the string with my hand, and she bit my hand in her effort to get the string. Well, that's only because you taught her to bite the string in the first place. You know what I mean? What's the difference, in your opinion, between a national championship decoy? Hold on. What's the difference, in your opinion, between a national championship decoy and dog from a world champion decoy and dog? Jordan got me with that one. Jordan said, what's the difference between a national championship decoy and dog versus a world champion decoy and dog? Well, when you say decoy, I'm, I'm taking IGP out of there right away. I'm assuming you're talking about like ring sport, decoy and dog. Um, 
the difference is, I mean, you're playing with people from all over the world versus playing with people from just the country. So, you know, uh, logic would lead me to believe that there's going to be a higher level of skill at the world level because it's literally all the world has to offer versus just your little country. Uh, of course, it depends. There could be a, a way better dogs at a national uh, than a, a world, but you know, there's at a world event, there's the traveling factor that no one really thinks about. This is a good answer to get. Dude, if I'm going to decoy the the French Ring Championship in the US, okay, I might have to hop on a flight. I might have to go here or there. Okay, no big deal. Yeah, yeah, take my dog. On the world level, you know, you're probably talking about international travel for you slash the dog. That's a whole different dimension. You're talking about a time change. You're talking about a dog who is going to be way off their schedule, a decoy that's going to be off their schedule. Um, the world is going to be a bigger stage, more eyeballs on it. So all more people at the actual trial. So, you know, the difference is the world, it should be bigger. In theory, it should be harder. Okay, what up, Dave? I have a puppy as well as older dogs. All the same issue. Dave? Lightning doesn't strike twice, right? Dogs with the same issue. I wonder where that's coming from. I'm just busting your chops. Let's get into it here. Puppy and older dogs, they all have the same issue. If someone is at the door or it might be a typo, but I'm just going to read it as Dave put it and we'll see if we can decipher it. I have a puppy as well as older dogs, all the same issue. If someone is at the door or near, brains go dumb and they can't hear me at all. Alone, I can get them to listen and do good. I cannot solve this. Thank you for your question, Dave. Now let me let me rip you up a little bit, Dave. It's all goody. More friends. Let me let me let me get into this though, Dave. First of all, if someone is at the door or near, brains go dumb and they can't hear me at all. Now, Dave, I'm gonna help you, but first, you have fallen into a common trap that the average frustrated dog owner falls into. Dave, you're blaming the dog, but it's your fault. I'm sorry. You're blaming the dog. Their brains go dumb. They can't hear me. It's their fault. I don't think so. It's never the dog's fault. And now, Dave, let me rip you up a little bit more. I hope that you're a good sport. Let me rip you up here. Dave, why are we continuing to put the dogs in the exact same situation over and over and over again that we know they'll fail in? See, the very first time this happened, your dog told you something and gave you a piece of information. You didn't take it, and then you inadvertently conditioned this. You keep putting them awfully free roam in the house, and anyone could come to the door at any time, and then you keep trying to tell them stuff. So you're just burying yourself every time you try this you're doing the same thing 
over and over and over and over again, which is letting them have a free-for-all and then trying to holler some stuff at them when there's a distraction and it just not working. This is why I hate off-leash. Dave, where are the leashes at? Where are the leashes? One dog can't do it on their own, right? Right, okay, got it. Let's throw in more in a puppy. You're killing me here, Dave. You're killing me. One dog at a time on leash. Here's the other problem, Dave. You're just doing this uh, on your day-to-day, -day, just real life. Oh, here comes the UPS guy. Eh. No, 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 no. You can never work on something when you want to use it. You need to have a second person. You need to set aside a half hour. You need to have them outside. You need to have this be over and over. You need to be with the dog here. Do Dave, how long has this been going on? It's going to take three times as long to completely reverse it. Dave, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I have a puppy as well as older dogs. So it sounds like there's a minimum of three dogs. Like the puppy... Older dogs, it has to be at least two because it's plural. Might even be more than three, but let's say it's three. So here's what happens. The older dogs, they're all off-leash free roaming the house all the time. And yeah, you can tell them, okay, come here, sit, down, stay. Okay, good, break, yeah. I'm sure you can do all that with them. But they're off-leash free roaming in the house. Their lifestyle is like, I'd pretty much do whatever I want, whenever I want. Let me finish. One single dog hasn't perfected something, hasn't even done something, but then we're gonna put in another, and then they're all gonna feed off each other. And then every time you say something, your value just continues to plummet. And then we throw a puppy in the mix. So if it wasn't unsuccessful enough, now the puppy's gonna go in there, and now it's just going to all be completely screwed up. So, Dave, I'm sorry for going a little hard on you. It's nothing personal. It's a great question. It's an honest answer. Would you rather, I'd be like, well, that's very interesting, Dave. So what you can try is the knock at the door, take your food, and then tell them to sit. The whole thing screwed up, okay? This needs to be trained. No more off-leash. Why are they off-leash? They can't do something on-leash. Why are they off? One dog at a time. 100% on-leash. The training session is completely orchestrated and set up. Start to finish. If your dog doesn't have food drive through the roof, this won't work at all. That's what you need, my friend. Thank you for your question. Everyone, come on. Let's give it up to Dave a little bit. Come on. He sat here. I berated him. But it's all in good fun. And I'm only like that because I do really want to help out your dog. Every, every bozo is going to be like, well, did you try this? Maybe you could try this. Try doing this. Well, with my dad, the whole thing's screwed. It has to be started totally from scratch. You have to do things a thousand percent different than you're currently doing them. That's the solution. Give it up to Dave. Thank you. Kathleen, our farm has cattle pastures, perimeter fenced with electric fence. Oh my God, Kathleen, that's so mean to your cows. You shock them to get them to listen? 
oh my God, Kathleen, there's better ways. Have you ever tried to treat? I'm messing with you guys a little bit. I'm messing with you. Classic. Totally messing with you. Farm has a cattle pasture, perimeter with electric fence. We want to off-leash run with our two-year-old Doberman. How would you train her to avoid the fence without getting shocked? Sensitive dog. Well, Kathleen, after my leash rant, I think you have a pretty good idea where to start. You need a really high quality 30 foot long line and you need to keep that dog on the leash for quite some time. How do we train her to avoid the fence without getting shot? How do you train a cow to avoid the fence without getting shocked? See what I mean? That undermines the whole purpose of the fence. The fence is there to shock you if you touch it. How do you train an animal to not touch a fence if there's not an aversive? You, you, can, you can play silly goose with treats all day, but when it comes down to it, how do you teach an animal to avoid something? So if your fence is way too high for your dog, the only thing you could do is have a long line on, invest in very high quality dog training that will teach you how to operate and use an e-collar, and you're gonna have to set that to an appropriate level. That's just enough to discourage the dog, but not enough to break their spirits. But I mean, I don't even really love that. Look, Kathleen. You know what I mean? Okay. Lost my place in the questions. Hold on. We're going to wrap that one up, though. So, like, yeah, but Kathleen, it's like, <laughs> just trying to think of the best way to put it. How do you teach your dog to, to avoid a shock fence without it getting shocked? Well, if I knew the answer to that, I might be a millionaire because I would sell that to a billionaire, rather. You use a long line. When that dog goes up to the fence, you go pop, pop, pop on the dog's leash and collar, and then you cross your fingers and pray. But... Look, I mean, that question is just, well, how do you teach them to stay away from the shock fence without getting shocked? Well, what, well I thought that's what the shock was for. <laughs> I thought that was for, and if you're saying, well, no, the shock would just be way too much for her. Well, that's a pickle. Long line on e-collar, though, for real. I will buy a working line German Shepherd female soon. Should I build confidence and engagement month before starting any obedience cues or commands? Yeah, 100%. You should do engagement for months and months and months before you even entertain a sit-stay. Good question. Jordan says, sounds like insert dog training YouTube channel and his admit. Yeah, no, it's not them, Jordan, but 
That stuff's pretty ridiculous. Not them, though. Hi, Andy. What kind of harness do you use for your dogs? I've used several Icon Outfitters X-Back harness. That's what I use. <laughs> Ashley said, and another thing about the trainer, he is proud of training orcas. So cruel. That's actually not even the guy I was talking about. I wouldn't even entertain that guy. No, that's good guess. But that's not who I'm talking about. Where's your other mic? Sorry if the audio sucks, guys. It, my other mic just stopped working right before I did this. I couldn't figure out how to get the mic freaking work in. Is the audio that bad? Let me know in the comments, guys. Is the audio horrific? I just got a nice, expensive, brand new mic. Would not work today. And I've been using it. I've been using it. Go to put it on. It don't work. Do you have videos on how to train a puppy to walk nicely on leash on your Patreon? I want to do focus. Here's the thing, guys. There's no such thing as a puppy walking nicely on leash. No such thing. Now, by puppy, if you mean like six, nine-month-old, yes. Definitely on Patreon, you're going to find some videos that are going to get you there. But if we're talking like 8, 12, 16 weeks, there's no such thing as a puppy walking nicely on leash. Okay, that needs to be post-teething. <laughs> when Andy pauses after the question, you know the response is going to be good. You know, a little foresight so I don't get in trouble. Why do people want their puppies walk nicely on leash rather than play with them is a mystery to me. Well, you know, probably because some bozo trainers on YouTube are like, have your puppy perfect the attention heel in four seconds. And then you click it and it's just a bunch of shenanigans. My male puppy is now 17 weeks. He walks like a champ on leash. He knows a lot of commands already. Incredible quick learner. I've used a lot of your videos and just wanted to thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Nice work. I appreciate you. Who makes your favorite leashes? By far my favorite leashes. You can, the company, it's a small business. You can only contact them on Instagram. They don't have a website. They're, they're not like huge, massive business. They're a small business. They're called Canine Culture Collective. Canine spelled out. Now, I told them already. I said, guys, that's a long name. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. I know they're going to watch this. You guys better watch this. It's a little bit of a long name. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, canine culture collective, but you get used to it. Trust me. They make my absolute favorite leashes. Um, paracord, all different designs, all different lengths, different clip options, slip leads, handle, no handle, etc. cetera. Um, they will quite literally last forever. Uh, that's where you should get your leashes, but you got to mention your boy or else they probably won't even get back to you. 
they also make my um, the ball on a rope that I'm obsessed with. Catching the middle, just got in from training. What's up? Why not? That's the name. Thanks so much for all your video. Nice. I like to hear it. Best collar. You know what, Greg? I don't do collars. I mean, obviously, my dog, you know, of course, when the time is right, I do like a prong collar. I do like an e-collar. Duh. By the, but just a regular old collar, I just slip lead. That's all I do and from the place I told you. But I don't really just get like a normal buckle collar. Ashley, one of my loyal Patreon members, actually gifted me with a really cool, like a couple of them, a thick leather, like handmade, really cool collar. You're probably seeing some videos. I really like that, but I don't have the foggiest idea where she got it, nor do I recommend you get one. I, I just happen to like it. Best collar. Look, got here, pro tip, guys. If you're ever talking to anyone, I don't care if they're a dog trainer or just a, an owner, if they go, oh, prong collars, e-collars, immediately leave. Leave them. That would be like if I'm like harnesses. No, never use a harness. Never use a prong or any collar. So you're you're the collar authority on dogs. Then wow, that's fascinating. Beware, it's a trap. It's an emotional trap. You know what everyone should do? This is random, but I just thought of it. You know what everyone should do? Everyone should go around and they should share. Fellow trainer of mine, his name's Ivan Balabanov, and look, he's on YouTube. I, I like him. I wouldn't consider him a YouTube trainer. That's why I, I can crap on all the other ones, and, and he's fine. But he's really doing the Lord's work with, anti all positive dog training community stuff um you can share his video i mean he's really at the front lines uh, like th these these people are trying to hijack dog training and they're trying to turn it into what people in 2023 like to try to turn things into they're trying to completely hijack it and just make training something that it's not. So all you guys need to really, if you're a fan of me and you like my stuff, you guys got to be right there and, and be ready to, to share and to sign or something and to be like, um, if I want to train my dog on a prong collar or an e-collar, guess what? I'm going to do that. And I don't need a stranger that seems very emotional. I don't need them to tell me what I can and can't train my dog with. You know what I mean? Beware of those people. Okay, they're saying, when I speak up loud, it cracks. Use your inside voice. Oh, this mic sucks. I've seen that video, and she actually bites the ball and then tries to move to the string. I just keep going. Maybe I wear gloves. No, 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 no. No, Zara. No, no, no. Okay, Zara, bad handler. Because if you've seen my video with the ball, and if your dog 
fights the ball and then jumps off the ball and tries to come to the run. First of all, what have you been doing with this dog? But second of all, it's like, well, that's your fault because you're the one responsible for tension. You can't just go, oh, okay, she bit the ball. Whoa, weird. She let go of it. No. If she goes to chew, she loses the ball and it starts again. Why are you just sitting there with, okay, she's got it. Oh my God, she's off of it. That's your fault. You need action. You need to make that thing a lot. She would never, she's just sitting there so bored out of her mind. And there's so, there's so little activity from the ball. She's just moving around. You got to do a better job manipulating that ball, 100%. Why do people have to have their puppies off leash? Had a puppy run off at training day. Could have been a disaster. Bad handler. Sup, bro? What's up? Andy, what's your opinion on choice-based training no luring oh okay so free shaping I was like what is that have you ever heard of Susan Garrett a few weeks ago she was on Ivan's podcast I believe you're referring to free shaping that's how I call that's how I I know it um, I like it I like it um, it's not everything to me. I don't do it for a long, long period of time with the dog. Uh, but you could say that I like free shaping. I like choice-based training. You allow the dog to invent the exercise. It's in there a little better. It's great for puppies. Um, but of course, I like luring. I, I do a little bit of both. But I think it's cool. Everyone should do a little bit with their dog at some point. If you do a ton of it, though, very problematic for ring sport. See, guys, this is the problem with your name. Zara says, does Canine Community Collective ship to the UK? See, guys, we can't even get your name right. That's it's too many words. What? What? Yeah. Canine culture. Collect it. Yeah, they'd ship to the UK, I think. What do you think of plastic prong collars on a puppy? No. My pup's 12 weeks old. Yeah. No. Harness. Harness. No prong. Prong. A prong on a 12-week-old puppy. Zara, I love you, but come on, prong on a 12-week-old puppy, come on, what do we need that for? It's crazy. Thank you for being here in your question, though, in all seriousness, thank you. But what do I think of a plastic prong on a 12-week-old puppy? I hate it. I hate it. Someone said, watching a lot of Ivan, I don't know where he gets the energy to keep up the fight, LOL. Someone's got to do it. At one point in bite work training, should I start making trips for my dog to do work with different decoys outside my club decoy? I'm just a few hours drive from Oscar Mora. Depends what your goals are with the dog. Decoy hopping can be good. It can be bad. Oscar knows what he's doing. So I don't think you could really go wrong there. But it's still, it's just, you know, depending who you're training with, you do one thing in training, you, you do another thing with another trainer. Um, so you just want to be careful of that. There isn't like a point where you can go, look, you just talk to your, your current decoy, your current trainer. 
Um, you say, I'm going to get him on a new guy, see how he does, a new place. How do you think we should start? And kind of have your decoy that knows the dog do the session, kind of come up with the session for you so that when you get to Oscar, you're not like, I'm here with my dog. What do we do? No, you need to tell him. You need to go, look, we're working on the defensive handler. This is where the dog's at since it's a new place with a new person. You know, I want to go back to leg sleeves. We'll go back to, you know, super, super easy, and then we'll build it up, see how she does. Like, that's kind of what you want to do. So if you want to go from qualified decoy to qualified decoy, it's possible, but you just really have to make sure you're telling them exactly where the dog is and, and what you'd like to do. Do you do set work with your dogs? I'm wondering where to start. Rachel, unfortunately, I don't. Do you do any kind of tracking with your dogs? Would love a Patreon video. No, I don't, but I promise you guys, um, don't hold your breath or anything, but I promise you in the future, I'm definitely going to video-wise. I don't want to reveal too much, but I'm going to... Find a way to provide you guys with more content that maybe isn't exactly in my wheelhouse, like a tracking or a scent work. So not right now, I'm sorry, but noted, noted. Any advice for a confidence dog? I want to let my dog be in the backyard by itself. I can't get it to the house without scratching at the door. Okay, so I think what Victor's saying here is he wants to be able to put his dog in the backyard, go in the house, and have the dog enjoy the backyard. But what's happening right now is the dog just comes up to the door. Oh, let me in. Where are you, daddy? I love you. Da, 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 da. That's what I'm talking about in the beginning of this video, the puppy advice. You want engagement, but you want independence. You want confidence. Nothing personally drives me crazier than... You know, not a new dog, but a dog that I've had for months that I cannot leave in the backyard without it just sitting by the gate, jumping, whining, crying, whatever. You're a dog. There's a big yard. There's no one around. Go explore. Be a dog. Have fun. So what could you do? Man. Victor, outside of... Just leaving it out there. You know, let's see. Do you mention the age? The age is going to have a lot to do with this too. You know, if it's under four months, okay. You know, you got to what? But if it's older, it's like, well. So the, the, age, the age would be important there. But man. Depends how long you've been trying it. Depends how old the puppy is. Look, all I can suggest is, you know, a tie out line is possible, but that could just create a whole nother slew of problems. What I would do is I, I wouldn't, I'd back off on like any engagement, any like, oh, one on one train. And I would just try to get that tackled first. I'd put a bunch of toys out there. I'd put like little food all over the place so the puppy goes out there and it's thinking like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really all you can do there. If you're standing in the yard with the puppy and it's still up your butt the whole time, we got to tackle that before you get out of the picture. But just depends how old it is and um, how long you've been trying this. So maybe catch me on the next one. Circle back with me and, and let me know some of the details. 
Do you let your dogs run around outside without you? Just curious. Of course, that's what they're doing right now. Super easy. They love it. Sweet. All right, y'all. Another Q&A in the books. Sorry about the audio. I bought new mics. They didn't work. I'll get it figured out because I really want I really want the nice audio. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you catch this on the replay, thanks for watching. Leave me your comment. Hit that subscribe. Till next time, y'all. Be patient. Happy training. Make your puppy independent. Later, y'all.